Tonight, the NSA used Angry Birds to spy, Dell jumps on the 3D printer bandwagon, and life-size mock-ups of Apple's spaceship building. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 11 for January 27th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit. iFixit makes electronic repairs easy with all the parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right to the tech feed. Even angry birds can't seem to escape the NSA dragnet. The NSA and its British counterpart, GCHQ, may have been extracting personal data from mobile apps since 2007, possibly including the mobile game Angry Birds, according to new reports. Other apps include Facebook, Flickr, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google Maps. The agencies targeted, quote, leaky apps that could be hacked secretly to, address, uh, to, to hack address books, buddy lists, phone logs, and location data. It's unclear how much actual data was accessed in the program, but Internal documents suggest the ability to gather age, gender, zip code, marital status, income, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and other highly personal facts. Some apps enabled spies to figure out the handset models of individual phones and even the unique ID numbers. The information comes from recently disclosed documents provided by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden, the gift that keeps on giving. Well, 3D printing is great, but... 3D printers tend to output single-color projects using one material at a time, which kind of limits what you can make. But today, a 3D printer company called Stratasys announced a product that can print with several materials and multiple colors for the same print job. The Objet 500 Connex 3 multi-colored material 3D printer can combine flexible, rigid, and even transparent ingredients while printing a single object. It can even do sunglasses. For now, the technology is for high-end applications. Each printer will cost $330,000 when they ship later this year. But don't worry, in related news, Dell announced today that they'll sell MakerBot replicator 3D printers on the Dell.com website. They'll also sell 3D scanners. It'll just be like ordering an inkjet, inkjet printer. Most 3D printer models will initially range between uh, two or $3,000. Well, we've seen it at concerts and games, folks pulling out their smartphones and taking videos. But at Sunday's Super Bowl, the NFL is blocking live video streams from inside the stadium. In an interview with Ars Technica, NFL CIO Michelle McKenna-Doyle says the reason is simply bandwidth. They've reportedly beefed up the Wi-Fi and cellular coverage, but simply put, the stadium can't handle the traffic. Of course, you can always watch the game on Fox or their streaming broadcast. And for those in the stands, there's always the Jumbotron. Apple made a prototype of its future spaceship camp campus, where these buildings are and why Apple made them, coming up. And next, we're joined by Jason Heiner from Tech Republic to talk about Apple's earnings report. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit, makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard specialty and security bits. It also includes ESD-safe precision tweezers and anti-static wrist strap and opening tools to get inside any phone, notebook, tablet, or game console. Lightweight, compact, and durable, it's the gold standard for electronics work from garage hackers to the CIA and even FBI. But more importantly, iFixit's unique tools are used by repair technicians everywhere. Backed by a one-year warranty, the ProTech Toolkit is only $64.95. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for all the repair parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. Enter the code TN2 at checkout to save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit. Make sure you use the code TN2. Well, with us today to bring context to Apple's earnings call is Jason Heiner, the global editor-in-chief of Tech Republic and global long-form editor of ZDNet for CBS Interact Interactive. Welcome, Jason. Hey, thanks for having me here, Mike. Enjoy it. Apple announced fourth quarter 2013 earnings today, and the company sold a record 51 million iPhones and 26 million iPads. Yeah. They also beat expectations. So why were investors disappointed? Yeah, well, 
It's mostly because the growth, I think the fear among analysts uh, and investors and Apple observers is that the growth is slowing a bit. I mean, if you look, Apple's still remarkably profitable company. Um, they're the most profitable company in the technology industry. They uh, do a, a great job at what they do, selling devices, selling primarily smartphones and tablets uh, and a few computers here and there. Although, uh, you know, that, that market has not been grow very, growing very quickly for them for a while. But smartphones, if you look at Apple um, kind of quarter, uh, year over year, comparing fourth quarter, uh, which is when all the, the big money is made, right? It's usually right after they've announced their uh, their update to their pr updates to their products. And it's also the, the holiday season. Um, and it's when, you know, they sell the most devices. So this year over last year, um, the iPhone, for example, they sold um, 51 million iPhones, a lot of devices, right, for uh, Q4. But last year, they sold 47.8 million. So that's kind of a small amount of growth when you consider, you know, what they had been doing um, fourth quarter over fourth quarter for the last several years um, in the year before that. So, you know, if you compare uh, the, the year before, um, so that 47 million, 47.8, it was 35 million the quarter before that. Um, so that's big growth. The quarter, the fourth quarter before that, the year earlier, it was 16 million. So they went from 16 um, to 35 to 47.8. That's big growth. And then they went to 51. So you can see where it's just not the kind of explosive growth they had been having. So very quickly, do you think their uh, new entry into China with the China mobile deal will um, will give us a huge uh, growth in iPhone sales for the next earnings call for Apple? Yeah, that's the big question. Uh, can they can they blow it open in China? Um, there was a lot of there's there is doubts. Uh, one, it, it's it's a huge market, obviously, um, but there you know it's not it's not a market that necessarily caters as much to uh, the, the high end devices um, at times. Mm -hmm. So can Apple break into that market? Can they be a winner in that market? I wouldn't count them out. You know, people counted them out of Japan, and they've you know, have, have done great in Japan. It's a little bit different market than China, but uh, certainly there's enough, there should be enough buyers there that are going to be interested in the iPhone, but will there be enough to deliver the kind of explosive growth? Um, there could be, but it, it really is an open question. I, I think it's a, you know, you could, you could go 50, 50 on, on this one. That's really, um, that's really interesting. And it was a, a, a very interesting report. I think that people expected uh uh, more exuberance coming out of the report. Well, thank you for joining us, yeah. Jason. Absolutely. You Thanks can find Jason me. Heiner at techrepublic.com. And now we leave you with a glimpse into Apple's future headquarters. Construction crews have already started building Apple's new spaceship office, office complex. Well, the mock-ups at least. Call them prototypes for the new building. These are much smaller versions of what will be a massive building. The structures give Apple the opportunity to, quote, test construction methods, tolerances, and the visual appearance of precast concrete elements, unquote. The final 9,000 square foot design will be, only, will be four stories tall, and these models are only one story. One interesting note, the property where these photos were taken is only a few blocks from the new campus location. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast for this show at twit.tv slash tn2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Mike Elgin, and good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.